the human driver from a Dustin Fowler. In this one, we're, we're talking about religions. We've already looked at some of the basic stuff, looking at some terms, things that have to do with culture. We discussed the fusion in one of my earlier basic concepts videos for the first in human geography. Then we looked at language just now. What we're going to do right now is we're going to talk about another one of the big facets of who people are, and that is religion. But, right. so in the same way as we have popular culture and folk culture, we have large widespread languages like English and French and smaller indigenous languages like something you might see out in some sub-Saharan African village somewhere. Religion is also going to be, you're going to see elements of large scale and small scale as well. And so what in particular, we have five different world religions that we're going to study the most in Native human geography because they're big, because a lot of people are going to adhere to one of these five different faiths. And a lot of times you hear them called the great faiths because they have such a, a you know, large following of individuals. Okay, So we're looking at Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, uh, Buddhism, and Judaism. Now, in human geography in class, we're going to talk about a lot of different more specific examples. We're going to look, for example, at Sikhism. We're going to look at uh, uh, Baha'i and maybe a few others, like maybe Mormonism as a branch off of Christianity. But for the sake of what we're doing for this video, it's important that we understand the similarities and the differences of the five religions I just now mentioned. All right? And so, first of all, they're going to be split into basically two different camps. You've got the universalizing religions and the ethnic religions. Now, what's the difference in the two? Universalized religions are those that have made it far and wide. They're, they they work to get uh, converts. People go out and they do missions work and things for the sake of converting people to your cause. All right, they're very adaptable. Uh, people can accept Christianity as they are. In Islam, uh, it's the same kind of thing. Islam is the fastest growing religion today because many many more people are accepting it on a regular basis, even in the West. Your biggest religion on earth is Christianity because it just has more raw numbers of adherents. Somewhere around 2.1, 2.2 billion people on earth are going to say they're Christian. Islam is also a universalized religion and it's the second largest religion on earth. But why about the third largest? Hinduism is the third largest religion on earth with over a billion adherents. Almost all of them live in India, which is really, really important because this is one of the characteristics of what makes an ethnic religion ethnic. You see, Christianity seeks people far and wide. So does Islam, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to live in one area, but that anyone, anywhere, can be can easily join. However, with, with Hinduism, uh, it's something that you're typically born into. They don't really go out looking for other, uh, the, you know, for people to convert to, to Hinduism. Um, there is a lot of regional geography that, that has to do with it. For example, the importance of the, uh, of the Indus and Ganges rivers, um, the importance of their geographic uh, history, as well as the, the um, longevity of the religion itself. Right? So there is geographic ties to Hinduism, and most of the time you're going to be born into it, they're not actively seeking converts. That's one of the big characteristics of an ethnic religion. It just so happens that India is the second largest uh, country in terms of population on Earth, with a population that is projected to even exceed China as much as about 1.6 to 1.7 billion people by around 2040. And so because of this rapid growth, you see where so many people are born into a Hindu society, they're going to be Hindu. Right, which explains why that is such a large religion, even despite the fact that they don't seek converts like Christianity and Judaism and Islam. Just like with Hinduism, Judaism is another ethnic religion. Okay, people who practice Judaism, they don't look for converts. They're not. They don't care if you join or if you don't. The fourth largest religion on earth today is Buddhism, with almost a billion adherents, probably somewhere around a billion, maybe maybe it's a smidge more, almost the same size as Hinduism. Buddhism started as an offshoot, basically, of Hinduism. You have, uh, you have Siddhartha Gautama, the founder, the Buddha, the enlightened one, who was kind of uh, unhappy with the, the Hindu system, in particular the caste system. And according to the, to the, the legend, um, and if you guys ever watched The Buddha on Netflix, not really a great movie, but you know, it does a pretty good job at, um, at showing the life of Siddhartha Gautama and his revelations that led him to trying to figure out a way to overcome through meditation and through uh, basically, uh, with, with, not I wouldn't say withdrawal, but like through moderation, how to become enlightened. And so <clears throat> he believed that you could actually achieve moksha or enlightenment in one lifetime. 
uh, rather than have to, to be reincarnated again and again and again as the Hindus believe. Now, I've got a video on my channel that I did last year on Buddhism, so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time right now uh, uh, thinking about it. We're going to save these discussions for class. But Buddhism is a universalized religion. Anybody can, can learn from it. Anybody can adopt it. Uh, the, the Dalai Lama, who was one of the leaders, he was a leader of the Tibetan uh, branch of, of, of Buddhism, says that, that Christian, you know, Christians and the West could, could do a lot to benefit from the teachings and principles of, of Buddhism and the Buddha. So, uh, and if you ever read up on any of this philosophy, or the Buddhist philosophy and things like this, it is something that we could probably all benefit from if we just take it to practice. There are many similarities, in fact, between uh, the teachings of Jesus and some of the teachings of Siddhartha Gautama. As for how geographers study this, there is, a, there is a regional approach to studying and understanding you know, religion as well. Not only can religion uh, make uh, an impact on the cultural landscape in a region from region to region, you see where there is certainly a predominance of one or more religions in certain areas as opposed to others. For example, the prevalence of you know, I guess you've got a large percentage of people in the Middle Eastern countries who practice Islam. You've got a large chunk of people in Indonesia, the largest chunk of Muslims on earth living in Indonesia, which is the fourth largest uh, uh, population-wise country on earth. Uh, you've also got you know, your Protestant Christians living in the, in the United States and Canada. You've got um, Australia with large Protestant groups. And you've got most of your Catholics kind of living over in uh, Southern Europe, but in particular in Latin America. Most people in Europe are extremely secular, so you actually see an increasing absence of religion in that region. So from place to place, you're going to see the prevalence of some religions um, over the prevalence of others. And so this is part of the geographic study of culture. So there you go. That's religion in a nutshell. Hope you guys got something from it. Just stay tuned. Hopefully I'm going to get a review video up here for you guys getting ready for the test. I hope you guys got something out of it. Share it with your friends. Like, subscribe. Do what you got to do. Help others to know a little bit more about human geography as well. Hope you guys have a good one.